happy new month to every one of us. Wow. It's so glorious. This is the 1st of August, 2021. I welcome you, brothers and sisters. Now we're going to go straight into listening to the teaching by two of our elders. We have two elders in the house. Glory be to God. And I get to the Demeter and uh, beloved sister, Elder Comfort Ubonakbabu. I mean, they are senior people. When you hear me call them elder, I really mean they are elders. And, and God has really kept them in a faith. So they're going to share with us. Sister Gertrude will go first and speak. We have been learning, studying on growing in the spirit. So our text has been from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. The whole Bible reading is from verse 11 to verse 16, which we will come to later. So, uh, Sister Gertrude, you have five minutes. Please go ahead and share with us what the Spirit of God has put in your mind to share with us. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. God is good. He has been so good. And uh, oof, learned, I have learned so much through this platform. Thank you, Pastor, for being available to be used to teach us. And uh, just like you asked me, I will only share the summary, not too much. So there are so many things we have, have learned from me. And Brad, Sonny, thank you for your own summary that came earlier uh, this morning. So we are grateful to God. We had a Bible uh, passage from Ephesians chapter 4. It took apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Verse 14, then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Praise the Lord. The Key verse is verse 13. It says, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become matured, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. How I'm going to summarize it is, I'll do it in two parts. What is growing in the spirit? I'll take that and then I will end by saying, how do we grow in the spirit from what I've understood, from what the pastor has been teaching us and also from his word? How do we grow in the spirit? That is the, those are the th two things I will take. So what is growing in the spirit? Growing in the spirit simply means growing in the fullness of Jesus Christ. And growth, we know, is to increase increase in size, as Pastor had told us, capacity. It could be physical growth, it could be mental, it could be spiritual, and it could be social. And we can see this in Luke chapter 2, verse 52, where Jesus is described. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature, and in favor with God and men. So Jesus grew in wisdom mentally, he grew. In... So those are the four aspects we are supposed to grow in, and it's only the Lord who can help us to grow. So growing in the spirit, as a Christian means maturing, growing to the stature of Jesus Christ. From what we have read, Jesus is the standard. Something cannot grow if there is no life in that person. 
and we have this life through believing and accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So that has to be there. If you don't have the life of Christ in you, you cannot grow. It's just like a plant. If it doesn't have life, it won't grow. So we need that life. And that life is in Christ Jesus. Scriptures told us how God sent his son, that is Jesus Christ. And what did he send him to do? To die for us so that through him, we can be reconciled to God. And then when Christ was going back to the Father, he said he was going to send the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in us. Those of the Holy Spirit lives in us. So he helps us to grow. And from that text, that I read, and the knowledge of the Son of God. I will not explain. Pastor explained that, and he will explain more. And under that, we have the mystery of God, both of the Father and of the Christ, the body of Christ, the church of Jesus Christ. We are the body of Christ. Body of Christ is not words, and then the Holy Spirit. What the Holy Spirit mystery is, he has come to teach us. He comes to remind us of the things of Christ. Holy Spirit can only walk through his word because that is what is growing in the spirit. Let me just uh, rush out and uh, rush and say something. So in yeah. our words, uh, yeah. that's, that's why it's the key thing that speaks to you, really. It's not going through everything again. It's to be able to speak the key things that speaks to you, that you really want to leave. Summarize now, and thank you. Service is very important. Stewardship of time and, and money. My conclusion is that one has to know the Lord. You have to have the life of Christ in you to be able to grow. And when you have the life of Christ in you, Christ will help you to grow. And there are some certain things we need to do to be able to grow. God has paved the way. He has done everything for us. So we have to study his word. We have to take his word seriously, study it, and believe it. We have to pray. We have to communicate. And uh, we have to fast. Fasting could be in different ways. We have to serve and be stewards of the time God has given to us, the gift God has given to us, and the money. And there are times we need silence and solitude to be on our own, just like Jesus who go on his own to be with the Father. We need that too. So this is where I will stop. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Yeah, God bless you, beloved sister. Thank you for that contribution. Thank you. And very excellent point. You hit on life a lot. Life is what uh, makes us grow. I really noted that point you have been hitting on. Thank you so much, sister Gertrude. Eat them at all. God bless you. Now we're going to listen to Sister Comfort Ubon Apavi. My faithful brothers and sisters, greetings to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Like you have said, I have been so overwhelmed. I don't know where to what to say, where to start. But I just what came to me was the I have seen the Lord's goodness, his mercies and compassion. I have seen the Lord goodness. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Then I ask the, a question, my brothers and sisters, having followed this study from the beginning, who is a Christian, the one that is like Christ. Like what Sister Gertrude has said, this is a process. It's not today you become a disciple of Jesus Christ. You grow, you make progress, you grow until that is the standard, the yardstick. My dear, no crooked assessment tools will fit into this uh, uh, measurement. Jesus is the measurement. He can adjust this measurement to suit you. No any other crooked instrument of assessment. So I feel so happy. I will you now say my pastor say this, my elder say this, the church said this, 
this organization, the ministry said this. Of course, the study is so clear. No GO have it for you. No pastor. I thank God who has given you pastor the understanding to explain it in your own way. With God's Holy Spirit, we have also understood based on what you have explained and like Sonny put it, when you talk, said it, it did not. But after going to, just like what happened, they say when Paul preached to the Boreans, Berean they Christians from the scripture to yeah. see whether what Paul was saying was the truth. Yeah. In fact, I, I, after I said that, uh, the scripture that I read was um, Second uh, Corinthians chapter one, verse uh, twenty-four. I think I would like, really like to read from Amplify. Paul says, "Not that I we have dominion over you and lord it over your faith, but rather that we walked with you." as fellow laborers promote your joy for yeah. in your faith. That is that faith in your strong and welcome conviction or belief that Jesus is the Messiah through whom we obtain eternal salvation in the yeah. kingdom of God. Yeah. You stand firm. Yeah. So that really helped me to see what he, uh, your understanding by the Holy Spirit, and we also trying to reason with the help of God's Holy Spirit. Yeah. Our faith in Christ Jesus, which Jesus. is the key. That's you, it. Know, you must get the understanding as guided by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Then you will build it up, you grow with it, that then there will be a unity, like Sister read, unity in faith and yeah. the knowledge of Christ. Not yeah. this one said this, not this one. The unity as guided by the Holy Spirit. I also like what the John said at John chapter 17, verse 17. Yes. Because it is the truth. It is not our own message. Don't let us not interpret it the way we understand. Let the Holy Spirit do the work. Yes. 17 of 17, there Jesus say, sanctify them, that is purify, consecrate, separate mm -hmm. them for yourself, make them holy by the truth. Your word is truth. The word of God is truth. It doesn't have vision. Mm -hmm. Guided by the Holy Spirit. The, God's word is the truth. No yes. vision. In fact, I, then I said, my brothers and my sisters, the day your spiritual eyes will be open, you will walk away from any manipulative spirit without mm -hmm. anything holding you back. Yes. That is according to that verse 14. Yes. We are no more a, a, a child. Mm -hmm. You walk into a place where people are manipulating, using their own crafty ways. You know mm -hmm. that is not what Christ is looking for. That's correct. Oh, my sister, uh, sisters and brother, I yes. am overwhelmed. I am excited. When God wow. gave me Thank this you. spirit, Thank I was you. Wondering how, why is it me? What is happening? So the goal of all Christians is to attain and maintain and grow to a full grown man, measuring up to the statue and nature or standard of Christ. Amen. So God that's, has given us gift. Let us use it effectively. And when we do that, we will grow the church of Jesus Christ. Yes. Build the body of Christ. Yes. Grow it to that standard. Yes. That we will uh, always be happy. Yes. We always not be carried away by yes. any doctrine that is not biblical thank you very much for that contribution so thank you sister gertrude again thank you sister comfort the two elders in the house god bless you so much for teaching us the truth and uh, inspiring word of god and for what you have shared 
for everybody who has connected, we are discussing on growing in the spirit. And the full scripture is Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 16. And all the key points have been made already. Let us remind ourselves that it is not optional for you to grow in the spirit. It is not. When you give birth to a child, if that child still sits down crawling, will you be happy with that child? Definitely not. So growing in the spirit is a requirement. It's for us to grow as our sisters have emphasize every one of us uh, has emphasized we are to grow to the standard and that standard is the fullness of Christ to become like Christ and for you to um, just reflect on what that means read the synoptic gospels again and see the full manifestation of God in Jesus Christ while he was here on earth. And read the Acts of the Apostles again and see the manifestation of God in the early apostles. This is what Jesus has called us to be. So growing in the spirit is to become, is to attain, is to attain the fullness of Jesus Christ, to attain the fullness of Jesus Christ. And this is meant for you yourself, first and foremost, to benefit all the blessings of God that God has provided for you, for me, for us, through Jesus Christ. Number two, for us then to do the will of God, because if you don't grow to this fullness, you will not be able to do this full work that Jesus Christ said we should do. And so that scripture then, you can now understand what Jesus has done to build his body. If you now start from verse 11, he says, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers. So don't sit down and think that you are nothing, you are nobody. By yourself, you are nobody. By myself, I am nobody. But Jesus already has made you. So identify yourself in Christ, which is your own gift and calling in Christ. Christ has equipped you already. Praise the name of the Lord. Through this, then, as we make ourselves available, we'll grow and become that full person, that the fullness of Christ will be manifest in us. Praise the name of the Lord. I just want to share something to again bring our knowledge of what God can do. I want you to go with me to Numbers, Numbers chapter 11. So you see this, our God has not changed. So this was the situation that Moses faced. Numbers 11, if we start from verse 11, I'll read very quickly. So Moses said to the Lord, why have you afflicted your servant? And why have I not found favor in your sight that you have laid the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I beget them? that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a guardian carries a nursing child to the land which you swore to their father's 13. Where am I going? Where am I to get meat to give to all these people? For they weep all over me saying, give us meat that we may eat. 14, I am not able to bear all these people alone because the burden is too heavy for me. 15, if you treat me like this, please kill me here and now. If I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my wretchedness. 16. So the Lord said to Moses, everybody read with me. So the Lord said to Moses, so the Lord is saying to you, hallelujah. He said, gather to me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tabernacle of meeting that they may stand there with you. 17. Then I will come down and talk with you there, I will take of the spirit that is upon you and will put the same upon them and they shall bear the burden of the people with you that you may not bear it yourself alone. Can you see what God did even as at that time? The spirit of God that was upon Moses, God said, I will take it and I will also give it to the 70 men that you choose. Jump with me immediately to 24. 
and see what happened. So Moses went out, told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tabernacle, 25. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took of the spirit. The spirit here is capital. It's the spirit of God that was upon Moses. The spirit that was upon him and placed the same upon the 70 elders. And it happened when the spirit rested upon them that they prophesied, although they never did so again. They prophesied. They received. There was evidence that the power of God, the spirit of God, has come upon them. The enablement of God has been given to them. The same enablement that God gave to Moses, God said, I give it to the 70 men that you choose. And he did it. 26. But two men have remained in the camp. Look at this. Look at our God, his faithfulness. Even two men that remained in the camp that didn't show up. Verse 26. But two men have remained in the camp. The name of one was Eldad, and the name of the other, Medad. And the spirit rested upon them. Now, they were among those listed that who had not gone out to the tabernacle. Yet, they prophesied in the camp. And look at what Joshua did, zealous young man. And a young man ran and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. So Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, one of his choice men answered and said, Moses, my Lord, forbid them. 29, which is the last word. Hear what Moses said. Then Moses said to him, Moses answered Joshua, Are you sick? Oh, that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Oh, that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Brothers and sisters, this is what God has always wanted to do. And through Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, God has sent his Holy Spirit to you and me. We have the Holy Spirit. It is time for you to identify yourself in Christ and grow to the fullness of the measure of Christ. Because the earnest expectation of the creation waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. The family is waiting for you to manifest Jesus Christ. Your neighborhood is waiting for you to manifest Jesus Christ. The whole world is waiting for you to manifest Jesus Christ. Could you wake up this morning? Could you rise up and let the Spirit of God walk through you, manifest in you? Because there is no limitation. It has always been what God desired. Oh, that all the people of God were prophets and that God will put his spirit upon them and that they will do the work that God Almighty has chosen and called them to do. In Acts chapter 3, you know the story immediately after the Holy Ghost has come upon the first disciples, the apostles, they were just like you and I growing in the spirit. In Acts chapter 3, they came and they saw that lame man at the beautiful gate. Of verse 6 and 7. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And when you follow that down, you saw that from this act, Peter preached the gospel of Jesus Christ, testified of Jesus, of his resurrection power, and that through him, God has given eternal life to all humankind. And 3,000 souls were added to the body of Christ. This is what it means to grow in the spirit. To demonstrate the power of God in our lives and to use it to do the will of God, the work of God, to bring souls, build the body of Christ. And God will continue to use us and God will continue to keep us and God will continue to be pleased with us in the mighty name of Jesus. I believe the message is clear. Mark chapter 16 you, we must continue to read it and read it till it becomes the reality in our life. As, as uh, our sisters have said, the word of God 
Mark chapter 16, when Jesus rose from the dead, came out of the grave. This was his word. And he said to them from verse 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. And he who does not believe will be condemned, 17. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. That is you. That is me. This is our portion. Here, verse 19. So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. 20. And they went out and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them, confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. That sign is with you. That sign is with me. It is time for us to be conscious of the spirit life that we have received and let God be glorified in our lives. Let Jesus be preached to all creatures. The Almighty God bless you, brothers and sisters. I will pause here. Maybe you have something Anybody has something you want to say, you want to add as we pray. Note that scripture and read it again for yourself and see how consistent our God has always been. And so when we're talking about God, don't just imagine God as you and me. No, that's not how God is. You've seen there how what God did. He said to Moses, my spirit that is upon you, to 70 men, I will come and I will take of that spirit and I will put in them. And he did it. And people who never had any enablement before, they didn't know what it meant to prophesy because the spirit came upon them. They prophesied. They had the enablement. They had the wisdom, as our sister said. They had the understanding and they began to support Moses to do the work. That Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ is now abiding with us. Glory be to God. Sister Comfort, please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. I just wanted us to look at this Acts chapter one. It's a very well-known scripture. Yes. And based on what you have said, so that we should know that that God that gave those 70 men the Holy Spirit to enable them to assist Moses was the one who gave Jesus Holy Spirit without yes. limit. Amen. And this has confirmed this. Acts chapter yes. 1, uh, verse 4 to 8. Yes, that's correct. And he says, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. Okay, and if I come to read seven, it is not for you to know times or season which the Father has put in his own authority. authority that you shall receive power, power when the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit has come, has come upon, upon you, you, and you shall, shall be witness to me in, in Jerusalem, Jerusalem and in all Jerusalem, or Judea, and Samaria, Samaria and, and to the Judea end of the earth. Amen. So it is to confirm that Jesus has not left us without that Holy Spirit. Amen. He has guaranteed that he will give us. Amen. And that comes said uh, what he said at Matthew, I am with you till the end. Yes. So he's with us. Matthew chapter 28. So let us depend, depend, surrender to God and his son Jesus Christ for the Holy Spirit. Amen. To come upon Amen. Us. Amen. Amen. And let us be conscious that the Spirit of God is with us. Mm -hmm. And as we go out, 
So what are you to do? You are to do just what Jesus has asked us to do. Preach the gospel. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Don't be afraid. When you see the sick person, just do as Jesus has said, as we have read in that Mark chapter 16, because you have been given the Holy Spirit of God to do what Jesus has done. You must believe in miracle. Not looking for miracle, but you must believe that your God can do all things. And God will do whatever pleases him at any time for his people. Because he loves us. And he is the one building his church. Not seeking miracles around, no. You have the power, you have been given the grace and God will do his miracles. His, as we saw there, said God confirmed with signs. God confirmed, God will continue to confirm with signs through you, through me, through us and through to the people of God. And this is very important, brothers and sisters, in this year, 2021, because of all that is going on in the world. Remember, the word is abide in Christ. Let us pray. Let us pray. Let us not even keep this. Let's begin to talk to God now. You yourself, where are you in this growth journey? It is by the Spirit of God. Where are you in this growth journey? And so talk to God now and say, Father God, help me. Help me. Help me to grow. Help me. Pour your Spirit upon me. Holy Spirit of God. The Spirit of God. The Spirit of the Son of God. As you were in Jesus Christ as you manifested in Peter, as you manifested in Paul, manifest in me now. Go ahead and talk to God. And anyway, you're hearing this message, if you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, it's that simple. For God so loved the world that he gave his son, his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish. Go ahead and tell him, Almighty God, forgive me my sins. I repent of my sins. Jesus, you have died for me. You have washed, washed me now with your precious blood and made me clean, made me whole. And now also join and ask, Father God, give me your Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit of God manifest in me. Let that power of God manifest in me. Teach me, Holy Spirit of God. Help me to grow. You are the spirit life. You are the life that causes growth. Even as we have learned today, you are the life that causes growth. Romans chapter eight, verse two says, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free, set us free from the law of sin and death. Go ahead, ask him, Father God, pour your spirit upon us. Pour your spirit upon your sons and your daughters as you have promised. Pour your spirit upon me. Holy Spirit of God, manifest your gift, your power. Teach me, help me to grow. Help us to grow. Help every one of these, your children today, to grow to the fullness of Christ. Thank you, our Father and our God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So our scripture for this new month is John chapter 15, verse 5. Praise the name of the Lord. And our focus is abide in Christ. Abide in Christ. That's what we'll be digging very deeply into. How do we abide in this Son of God? Is Jesus Christ. We have to again continue to learn deeper and deeper. John chapter 15, verse 5. This is very important, brothers and sisters, because this is the word the Lord gave us that this year, the secret, the key, for us this year, we shouldn't take our eyes off the ball, however it may look. 
I kept emphasizing to all, abide in Christ. Hold on to Jesus, my brothers and sisters. Evil wind are blowing, but it will not find you. It will not find me. It will not find our families. It will not find our household. It will not find the children of God in the mighty name of Jesus. So let's take that scripture together. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Lift up your voices and tell him, Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. In this month of August, I make up my mind to abide in you, Lord Jesus. The rock of ages cleft for me and caused me to bear much fruit, spiritually, physically, materially, mentally, socially, emotionally, in all areas. In this month of August, as I abide in you, Lord, help me, let me bear much fruit. Help me to grow to the fullness of Christ that is meant for my life. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Go ahead and pray for yourself. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Let's join our voices together and pray and say, Heavenly Father, in this month of August, we ask, Lord, that you will cause us to manifest, all of us, to manifest the fullness of Christ in our lives. We will manifest the fullness of Christ in our lives. Thank you, our Father and our God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Our next scripture is Psalm, you know, Psalm 91, Psalm 91, verses 7 through 10. Let's read it together and then pray. A thousand may fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. Only with my eyes shall I look and see the reward of the wicked. Because I have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, my dwelling place. No evil shall befall me, nor shall any plague come near my dwelling. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. This is the word of God for you and me and for his church in this year, 2021. So shall it be. So let it be. In Jesus' mighty name. First Corinthians. Chapter 15, verse 57. I believe we can all recite that. Let's take it together and declare it by faith upon our lives. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The victory of God be upon you, be upon me, be upon every one of us, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Finally, maybe you have your last one word or two words to just testify of God's goodness. Again, as I said, we will do. Let's still give this space this time. It's a glorious thing to see the month of August. 2021. Thank you. <laughs> you shared something in the chat. I don't know if I read it. Okay, please read it. Okay, so you said um, that growing in the spirit equips us spiritually to relate with God and man and build ourselves to reap the fruits in store for us, especially in this period when the word is being deliberately weakened to suit some opposite. Very true. Excellent contribution. Please try and capture that word. Growing the spirit equips us spiritually to relate with God and man and build ourselves to reap the fruits in store for us. Yes, that was also the key point I meant. Yeah, especially in this Let's see. Especially in this period when the word is being deliberately weakened to suit some purposes. Indeed. So, so true. So, so true. Indeed. So, uh, to reap the fruits in store for us. And you remember I added the second part. And to be used of God. Because at the end of the day, it is about the body of Christ. It's the soul that 
God is building us. We become part of that body and he wants to use us to bring more. We are his workmanship. This is what it means. And that's why we cannot sit down and say, I cannot heal the sick. I cannot cast out the devil. It's not you. It's not me. It's not by might. It's not by power. We are to become totally obedient, as we saw in that uh, mark. And that's why I kept reading the mark for us, because there you've seen that after the Lord spoke to the disciples, the Bible says that they went and God confirmed with signs and wonders. That's why I also emphasize that you cannot deliberately as a Christian say, I don't believe in miracles because you are limiting God working in you. At the same time, we are not to run around looking for miracles. Neither are we to be advertising miracles. That's not what it is. It is about Jesus, the son of the living God who has, God has given to save the whole human kind. And through him, God has given mankind eternal life. And this power he has given, there is nothing to be uh, to shy away from. Clearly, he has said, we will heal the sick, we will cast out devils. So in the course of that, we will do that. When we see the sick, let's pray for the sick. In fact, we're going to join our voices again as we are rounding off. And, and, and agree on those scriptures that we have read for, 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 for the year. That, and, and we should continually stand for one another with those scriptures. Yeah? I just want to say thank God for healing and for restoration. And also thank you for standing so solidly uh, by me and with me in prayer and in support. God bless you. With God bless you, my brother. Thank you, too, for standing with me. That's what it is. This is what we're talking about. The body of Christ is one. Yeah? So if one part is hurting and the other part should be affected, and because God has brought us, Jesus is the head and we belong to that one body. When we cry to him, give help, support, all that pull, he hears us. So I thank God for your healing, my brother. God bless you. Yes, Sister Comfort, you wanted to say something. Yeah, my family of God, I want to say I thank God for my family. I will always remain thankful. I will always remain grateful for his powerful, righteous right hands that have been with us. We have seen his grace. We have seen his mercy. We've seen his hand, we've seen his healing. So we say, God, thank you so much for being our God, for standing with us, for your son, Jesus Christ, who has paid it all for us. Yeah, thank you. We want to round off now. Our time is fast spent. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the testimonies of healing, of protection, of provisions, all that you have done for us. We say to you, be all glory in Jesus' mighty name. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the month of August again. Lord, we ask that this month of August, you will make us fruitful in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask together that in this month of August, you will protect us. You will hide us, O rock of ages. You will keep us from all evil. The sun shall not smite us by day nor the moon by night. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for how you have led us today. We thank you for your daughters whom you have used to teach us. We thank you for Sister Gertrude. We thank you for Sister Comfort. Lord, we pray that you feel them more and more in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your children who have contributed. Thank you for the message from our brother Sonny, from brother Lockie. Thank you. Thank you for the brother uh, Dara. We thank you for everyone 
For all those who join on Facebook, Lord, we thank you for their lives. Heavenly Father, one more time, we agree. Pour your spirit, pour your power upon every one of us that we will grow and we will experience the fullness of Christ in our lives, in our ministry, in our work with you, that we will grow and attain that full measure of Jesus Christ. And we will continue to please you and do your will. Thank you, our Father and our God, for we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we plead your mercy all over the world. We ask, Lord, that you will have mercy upon the world with the kind of things that are going on. Father, we plead your mercy. Have mercy on the world. Let the evil plague come to an end, almighty God. Heal the world as a whole, Lord, and let your kingdom be established in all nations of the earth and let your will be done. Let Jesus, the savior of mankind, be made known to all people, all tribe, all tongue, all kindred. Thank you, our heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, this is where we will close today. The Almighty God bless you. The Almighty God continue to cover you and hide you from all evil as we focus on Jesus Christ and abide in Christ in this month of August. You shall be fruitful, all round fruitfulness in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you, and I look forward to connecting with you again on Wednesday. Bye-bye. <music>